Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWplans.com and today I'm going to show you how to, I'm setting up my quarter four Amplify planner. First, I'll go over the tools that we'll be using today. Um, of course, we have my brand new fourth quarter Amplify planner. And we are going to have um, some stickers such as this one from my shop. Um, and I will go over each of the stickers that we're using, but there's a link in the description so that you can buy the stickers if there's any that you like that you want. Uh, we will be probably using our spatula tool, definitely our slice tool. I'm going to have a selection of washi tape with me, um, a selection of pens, and of course, highlighters. We're also going to need to have your either your previous quarters planner or your annual planner, whichever you're using with you when you set this planner up. First, let's go over what I've already done in the planner. So first, I'm gonna give you a quick tour of my Amplify planner. Uh, this is the planner, obviously, here. <laughs> uh, everything's normal so far. I've already installed my stickers, however. Um, my business for this quarter, quarterly business at a glance sticker here. My quarterly content marketing campaign sticker, which is brand new to the shop. You can buy it individually or as part of a kit. Uh, and those just launched in the shop this week, so you can go grab them if you want. Those are covering up the how to use this planner two page um, spread that comes with the planner. On the next page, where there's usually the two year calendar and the holidays, I have put my quarterly roadmap and my quarterly action plan sticker. I had kind of debated about covering these two pages up, but since this is my quarter four sticker, I actually have most of 2021 already planned out, so I don't need these two pages. Um, if you find that you do use these pages, you could put it, your full page stickers in the back. All right, I'm leaving this open for now. I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a moment. Same thing with this. I'm gonna do a walkthrough of how I use these. I'm not going to show you how I install my kits. Um, there are other videos that you can check out, such as the content planning part one video to see how I install my monthly kit, as well as some of the mini videos. Uh, same thing with the weekly. There is a mini video on installing the weekly kit, so I won't go over that with you today. And that's pretty much what my month is going to look like. We're just going to leave this all kind of open because we're just setting it up. We're not planning out my entire year yet. Once again, if you want to see how I use this to do content planning, check out my two part content planning video. Now, in the back behind the quarterly section, we have I'm leaving three pages. One, two, three blank. I have my October monthly content marketing campaign stickers also in the shop. And then I have one, two blank, three, four blank, five blank. And then we have our monthly content marketing campaign here. One, two, three, four, five. And then December's and then one, two, three, four, five blank in the back as well. Okay. And so I have these, my monthly campaigns broken up with pages in between for monthly notes. Um, anything that is very specific to my month. Uh, but I've left these open because I'm going to show you during the setup exactly what I'm going to do with these blank pages here. So before I move back to the front of the planner, what I want to make sure to do is tab out that October, November, December section. Um, I usually use Chelsea's tabs from her shop, but I have these left over from my tab setup video and I really hate wasting things so I'm actually going to use the passion planner tabs for this. Um, generally I recommend getting the tabs from Chelsea's shop but like I said I don't want to waste anything so we'll just use these. You guys should see the face I'm making using these. Um, the thing I don't, one of the things I don't like about these is how teeny tiny they are but how they also don't really fit in the uh, B5 size planners very well because they tried to make a one size fits all, which ended up being like one size fits none. Go figure. Um, but what I'm gonna do, and, and also I don't have the guide, like I really love Chelsea's stickers because it gives me a guide on where I'm placing these. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And I'm concentrating them toward the top because that way 
as long as October's open, I can see where these are. So that will make my life a little easier. But yeah, when you don't have a guide that comes with your tabs, and your tabs aren't designed for a quarterly planner or a planner this size, you kind of kind of eyeball it. So, but like I said, I, I have this divided out in the back so that I can at least see what the heck I'm doing with these months. One of the things I learned from the first two setups that I did is that I can make these monthly sections but it's really hard to find them again unless I use ribbons or something else. And I'm not gonna add a ribbon to this planner. Uh, something else that I figured out is that I really love, as I mentioned before, uh, the ability for me to go like this with my planner. It's one of my favorite features of Amplify. And the problem is if I put a ribbon, if I tie a ribbon on here or tie a ribbon pretty much anywhere on here, it totally impedes me from doing that, okay? So I'm not putting a ribbon on it, but I did tab it. And you can't see the tabs unless you open up October. And then once you open up October, you can see the tabs back there. I'll move the notes section so you can see them. But for the most part, I can just see them here so that when I need to find them, I can find them really quickly. Um, so we'll get started now with how I set up those individual pages. So let's get started with setting up our, my Amplify Planner. Uh, this page, decorate however you want. I'm going to leave it blank for now. Um, as the quarter goes on, I'll probably end up sticking in stickers, photos, kind of memory keeping here. So I'm leaving that blank for now. Uh, we're going to flip right to my Business at Advance page and I'm going to pull in my supplies here, my markers and my pens and highlighters and a ton of washi that I'll be using later. And I'm just going to start by doing a high level filling this out and then you can fill out your details on your own. Um, and I'm going to start with purple. And things I like to do for my business at a quarter, where is my business now? I'm going to talk about a few key metrics. I'm going to talk about average sales and my average monthly total and my uh, website metrics, IG followers, and probably we'll go over YouTube followers as well. But you can use whatever metrics that you find helpful for you and your business. Um, like I said, this is a content marketing planner. That, that's how I'm using my Amplify. Uh, if you're using it for something different, we have the different, like your personal quarterly goals, whatever. But you're gonna use this to kind of give a really brief at a glance where you are or where your business is. Um, what change would have the biggest impact is something that I will meditate on and fill in on my own later. Um, but you want to really consider what change, what could you change, what could you do, um, what would what would have the largest impact. Um, I think last quarter my goal was to get a 640 net um, for the averaging on the month and then you kind of go scale up from there. Um, I think I will scale, I'll just kind of double mine, my goal. So I'm going to just switch to my pen and we'll say 11 to 15 per month. Gross. And you can also list out a lot of different things that would have a an impact on your business or on you personally, and then kind of circle or highlight the one that would have the largest impact. Um, so I could also add like a thousand subscribers or whatever, and then just circle or highlight the one that would have the largest impact. Um, what would that highlighted one allow me to do? So why is this goal super important? Why is it the one that would have the largest impact? I'm gonna fill in that this is quarter four, 2020. And we're gonna then take this goal and come up with a SMART goal so that it makes it a lot easier to follow using these kind of metrics. So if my goal is 1115 a month, then my quarter, my quarter four SMART goal will be that by December, I will have sold I will have made, let's say, uh, 
$3,345 because that would be this times three. Um, and then you're going to, under your SMART goals, or continuing your SMART goals, say, I will do this by doing whatever, upping my average sale, getting more hits on my website, getting more IG followers, getting more YouTube followers, or whatever steps you could take to get this goal by increasing these metrics over here. Um, how will I know things are off track? This is where I'm going to put down, well, you know, I'm going to keep track of, I'll just do this right now with you. Keep track of daily metrics. If no new sales for three days in a row. Habits to develop. These are things that you will do every day in order to hit your SMART goal. If I get off track, this is where, if you see this happening, if you get off track, what are you going to do? Um, okay, in, in this case, like evaluate postings for popular and unpopular, or we'll say less popular, content, change time, date, and frequency. Um, and then like I said, habits to develop to get me through my goals. Okay, so that would be how I would set up my business for this quarter. My quarterly content marketing uh, campaign, we're going to get a little bit more uh, digging into the, what I was talking about on the previous page here. I'm going to divide this up. My quarterly goals we will do a goal for the entire quarter. This is probably not straight. I'm looking at this from an angle. Okay. And then I would break this down further into my goals for the individual months. So, we'll have October. Content themes. This I would just break down into my three months. My headlines, I think I will also break down. Hand is atrocious right now. I don't know why when I'm on camera, I just can't write correctly. So anyway, and then same thing here. And then once again, down here for my keystone content, we'll do the same thing. How this works is I will write down my quarterly goal here from the previous page. I will break it down into October, November, December goals. I will come up with themes for each month. So like October, we will be focusing on prepping for NaNoWriMo. You can just do this while I'm talking about it. So October, our biggest content theme is prep for NaNoWriMo. Our headlines, we have 31 days of novel prep. My keystone content, this is the big thing that a lot of it's going to focus around and we're going to make that my uh, character guide workbook. And then my calls to action will be download the guide. And we'll say 10% off nano kits. Okay. So my content themes breaks down into the headlines. In this case, there's 31 headlines. I already have them planned out. Um, and then my calls to action and the keystone content, which is the big piece of content that everything else is going to revolve around. So. And I would just go ahead and do that for every month going forward. So that would plan out my quarter. Now, the next page on here is my quarterly roadmap. This is broken down into a couple of goal. You have your goal here for the quarter. That's pretty self-explanatory. Step one, step two, step three. These you can do in a couple different ways. Uh, you can do your big goal and then break it down into first, I need to accomplish this. Second, I need to accomplish this. Third, I need to accomplish this. 
and then make these your monthly goals. Or if this is a big goal that gets chunked into monthly segments, in Oct this becomes just October and then all the things that you need to do in October. November goal, everything that needs to be done in November. December goal, everything that needs to be done in December. So to, show, to kind of explain the two ways you would do this, if this was about my sales revenue, I would say, all right, my goal is an average of 11.15 a month. We would do, this could be October goal, 11.15, November goal, 11.15, December goal, 11.15. Total goal here, uh, 33.45. And then in October, when October comes, I would go ahead and go through here and write out all the things I'm gonna do to hit that October goal. November, all the things I'm gonna do in November to hit that October goal, uh, the November goal. December, all the things I'm gonna do in December to hit the December goal combined, I will hit this goal. And you can also go through and update them every month. So if you didn't hit October, you can make adjustments to November. The other way to do it is if you have a plan that requires sequential steps. So for example, NaNoWriMo is coming up. If my goal is to publish a novel this uh, next year, Step one, October. Step one would be prep my novel. This could be something I'm doing in October or I could start now in September. Prep the novel. Step two, write the novel. Then you add in things like 50,000 words a day, daily writing prompt, etc., etc. Step three, edit your novel. Doesn't have to be in December. Doesn't have to be every day in December. Could be that you get done NaNoWriMo by the 15th of November. I've seen some people do it. And then you spend the 15th through the 30th doing the editing prompts. Whatever it is, step one, step two, step three, and then you can go in and date them. So those are the two different ways you could use your quarterly roadmap. And I threw this in here because it's not business specific. You can use it if you're not running your own business. Over here we have the quarterly action plan. This sticker comes in a set with the roadmap and it's really designed to go, okay, here's my timeline of things. It, it really works with the steps um, way of doing this instead of the monthly way of doing it. So you would start with step one, plan, you, you know, go, okay, write my novel. Step one, prep the novel. Step two, write the novel. Step three, edit the novel. You have all your little bits coming off of it um, with all your little ideas. And then you're gonna go, okay, what's the first thing I gotta do to prep the novel? Step one, prep the novel, okay? You can use Roman numerals like one, prep novel, A, buy the novel prep stickers, B, subscribe to get the novel prep daily prompts, C, do calendar, and then go through and calendar every single day's activity, prompt, and time to do it. Same thing with step two, actually write the novel, you know, your steps would be sticker in every day's writing prompt, um, calendar time to do it, whatever other tasks you had, okay? So that's how that would work. There's your timeline, your action steps would be, like I said, if prep the novel, it's like buy stickers, do this, do this, do this. So you can check those off as a to-do list. Um, so you can keep hitting your goal posts. Team and tools, find an accountability buddy would be a good one. Tools that you'll need, computer, Scrivener, Microsoft Word, whatever you're using. And you just fill that out for each action step. So when you go to do the next action step, you know what you need to have and who's gonna hold you accountable or who you can ask for help. So that's our, how those stickers would work. And it takes a lot of thought and I'm not gonna do this live with you guys, um, but I will have a blog post up that shows you exactly how I set this up. And so you can check that out. This is the special date section and I'm going to show you today how we're gonna hack this into a, to uh, turn this into a bit of a future log. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I've got a selection of washi here and I'm just gonna grab something that I like. I like this like outer spacey one and November's, not November, September. I always focus on galaxy Milky Way outer space stuff. So we're just going to go with this. And once again, best feature here. And I'm not even going to worry about edges. It's going to stick it down. Grab my slice tool, my ruler. Okay, I'm lining this up here with this edge. And those of you guys that have seen me do these other videos know exactly we're gonna cut through it. Slice tool three times, flip it around, 
do the exact same thing here. Line it up. Pull it off. I'm covering this up because I don't want to see where it's a special date. So this is just my future log. And you could even go as far as to get like a sticker or something where you're writing in 2022 or 2021 to 2022, however you want to do it. I'm just going to line that up there on the edge. Same thing here. So there we are and this would since this is quarter four this would be a 2021 future planner and at that point what I would just do is go through and with my current planner that I have transfer anything over from that future log um, if I was doing it as a 2021 2022 planner then I would write in the year here so like if this was I was planning for January if I was doing like half a year I might do like 20 one and then if this was going to be 2022 right 2022 if you're splitting that up you, that doesn't really apply to quarter four but like for quarter one where january is already in the front then you would make this 2022 2022 2022 and then 2021 2021 etc okay if that doesn't make sense leave a comment i will try to do a video that better explains that and then there's different ways that you can do future logs. What I'm going to just do is put in the dates that I already know I have something coming up. So I have in March um, the Airborne Toxic Event Concert that got rescheduled due to COVID. And in March I also have... Um, WPPI and Project Obscura. In April, I have Shutterfest. And I would just go in and then put in the dates that month, and they're not going to be in order. And as you go through your quarter, you're going to have more events come up, and they're just going to be all kinds of out of order, but you can at least use this the next month or the next quarter, when you start planning out January, February, March, you can go, okay, I've got this, put it on the calendar. I've got this, put it on the calendar. And when you're making plans, you can also at a glance say, oh, well, I can't do this because I have this on that date. So that's how I would set up my future lock instead of a special dates. It's kind of the same thing. And you could even go through and highlight your colors at the top there if you really wanted to. But that's future log setup. Next, I'm going to show you how I would use my three month goals and my goal breakdown. Um, this it comes with the planner, it's already in there. So, what you could do, there's a couple different ways that you can use your three month goals and your goal breakdown. Um, this is kind of like a level life, level 10 life planner over here, except there's only eight spots. Um, what you could do, you could kind of divide them. Um, however, or just, you know, like get rid of whichever ones you don't want to use. But um, what I'm going to do, uh, this, there's, there's a few different ways you could do this. Um, if you have an annual planner, do the full level 10 life goals. Plan it out, and then you would go in and highlight where you are in each category. So, for example, if I go into my um, annual planner, I look at business and career. Let's say, let's say it's pink because I color code everything. I would highlight this in pink, and I would highlight how many of my top ten objectives I've done for the year, which is three because this year. Hmm. And then I would pick one maybe well one for each month so three to focus on for the next three months so that at the end of three months i'll have six of my ten for the year done okay um another way you could do this is you can also list out the ten things that would improve 
like your, your 10 things that you wrote down in your annual planner and then circle the ones that circle when you're going to complete and highlight the ones you have completed. So let me give you a real quick example of how this would look. So here's my level 10 life plan from Chelsea shop that's in my annual planner here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you the two different methods I was talking about for the three month goals. Um, first we can go, I've highlighted that I'm at like level three on the business planning. And what I'm going to do is select three from my, the next three from my level 10 life goals annual and make those my goals for the next three quarters. So let's see, since this is specifically focused for my business and career is specifically focused on my sticker business. So I will say, we'll put the big one, my monthly goal. In one month. Okay. So that would be my next three goals. Sorry, I let's say during this year I accomplished three goals from my annual. Those have been highlighted. I've highlighted those off. I've picked three goals for the next three quarters. You could pick more goals if you have small goals or if you're really ambitious. And then as I complete each goal during the quarter, I would go in with a highlighter and marker and check it off. Boop and then check off the next number. So, oh, I, I hit my, my monthly goal, I can highlight off four. If I hit all three, I would be able to have it all the way up to six highlighted off. The other way to do it is, um, as I mentioned before, to highlight and um, refocus uh, with all 10 of them in here. So you wouldn't need a second annual planner. You could use this as both an annual and your uh, quarterly. So we'll use the family and friends section as an example. I'm gonna just list out all 10 that I listed earlier this year. So what I'll do is write in all 10 of my goals and I'll do this every single quarter and I will number them one through 10. It's, there's not gonna change between quarters. You could set up all four quarters if you bought the bundle at the same time by just going through and doing your 10 goals for each of these sections. Once I have done that, I'm gonna go through, let's say I've set up all four of my quarters and now we're in quarter four. I'm gonna go through all of my 10 goals for the year and I'm gonna start by highlighting the numbers at the top that I've already completed. So I had a game night and I did want to go to a party. Um, let's see here. All right, so I've highlighted the ones I've completed. I will cross out the ones I didn't complete or I can't complete. So like networking, not going to happen. COVID uh, meetup, not going to happen. COVID book club, I can do virtually. Brunch date in theory, we could do virtually. And girls night out, mm, maybe, maybe not. So then what I'm just going to do after that is circle the one I'm focused on right now by highlighting it. So my focus right now is going to be going to the book club. Once I have either gone to the book club or determined that I can't do going to book club four times a year, I've already done it twice. So by November, if I haven't gone to any, we would either X off five or and move on to another number. Or if I had done it, highlight five and move on to and highlight the next one that we're doing. Uh, there's a couple other ways that you can use this sheet, but these are the two ways that I've found to be the most helpful. Once you have completed all of your areas, you're going to pick the one that you're focusing on. So let's see the one that would make the biggest difference for you. And you would move it into your goals to focus on. So we already said we're going to do the 1115 monthly sales. And we're going to do book club you do that for each of these, then you go to your important to do's and you're going to coordinate between this and this, um, your most important to do. And I'm taking out this apostrophe because that will drive me fucking nuts. Um, and then I'd list, okay, for this sale, the most important to do is make sure we do a strip sticker drop every month or every week, whatever I determine the most important to do is. The other thing that you can do, and we'll go back to our good friend washi tape, or you can 
use this. And this will also get rid of that apostrophe that I can't stand. Errant apostrophe. White out. And then we can continue with our goals to focus on um, and make these monthly goals to focus on. Uh, if you're like, what are you talking about? Let's see, we have eight sections. So we'll do eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll probably run out of room, but that's okay. I'm going to color code these here as my October goal. Then I'm going to do another eight. One, two, we'll make this three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, yeah, we're going to run out of room, but that's okay. Make these November. And then one, two, three, four, five. We'll even go down to six. And you can also white out out here if you really needed to do eight each month. And then these are my December goals. And then I could go through and say, okay, my November goals, based on this, we have five influencers. Um, our next goal here is going to be have a girls' night out. And I'll put virtual if I need to. Then we'd go through again, be like, okay, finish migrating from Etsy. Okay. So that's the other way you could do that. Just go through, pick one for each month. And like I said, we whited that out so I don't have to deal with the apostrophe and we can add in more goals and you could double up goals here. So that is how you can use your three month goals sheet. Once you have your three month goals sheet done, move on to your three month goal breakdown. You're gonna select in theory, a goal from each section or your top four most important goals from each section, each month, whatever, and then break them down into action items. What I would choose to do, I'm just gonna follow on from what we did there. And if you already know where I'm going with this, congrats. Like this. Is this the one we used? Right. And oh, that's the one we used. And then I'll go with a bright color here. And what I've set up here are our October. So we'll make this 31 October. 30 November, 31 December, and also 31 December. So what I've done is I have an October goal, November goal, December goal, and then this is going to be my yearly goal or my quarterly goal, whatever my big goal is for the quarter. And we already said that my goal was going to be, hmm, I was overestimating there. 33 and that we got from our brainstorming over here. This could be if you were doing nano, write a novel, your goal one would be like we said over here, same basic principle, or pick one from your, once you've done all eight here, all eight here, all eight here, pick one from the October section, what the most important one here, one from the November section here, one from the December section here, overall most important quarterly goal. Break it down and give yourself due dates. These coordinates with our sheet here. Your, this becomes your timeline. Break it down, one, two, three, one, two, three, with your due dates. And then you can either write in your action steps here by subdividing this. And I'll grab a ruler and show you how we subdivide. So by subdividing this, you make your goals, we'll, we'll call it that big. And you just subdivide here. Okay. This becomes your roadmap with what to do. And these are your action steps or your tools or your, your tools and um, resources, whatever. 
break it down even further. So goal one, month of October, I think would, I would actually focus on new subscribers. And then we'll, have, we'll break it down into marketing. And then we break it down, we'll use our habits that we set up earlier in our business plan to, um, to help fill out some of these action steps that we have to do. And so then I'd break this down into action steps and then I could even use this as my resources section. So, and I would do that for each, sing each and every single goal. So that would be how I'd set up my goal breakdown. And then finally we'll come to our back pages because like I said, you can see my other videos for how I would set up my month, how I'd set up my week and how I would set up my day and what I would do with my week. Um, this you could use as a running task list. You could use this to do break down your weekly um, goals from here into weekly goals and then break them down onto your weekly page. This I'm going to leave blank. You may also have like notes for meeting, weekly meetings, whatever. I'm going to go right to my notes page in the back. Um, something you could do before we get here, actually, you could go here, you could color code this, you could refill this out if you're doing the 10 things section, you can refill this out. You can also leave it blank and put in what worked, what didn't for each of these. Gratitude, things to celebrate, your reflection questions. I would color code the heck out of these, but that's just me. So we're going to go to our notes page. Um, depends on what you need in order to set this up. Um, I have a couple of sections that I always set up in my planners. So we will do a flip it around. And this becomes my overdue task list because I always have tasks that I haven't completed the quarter before that I want to complete in the new quarter. And so I just set that up by going backwards. Okay. So your notes page is very personal, depends on how you want to set it up. We've already tabbed out and stickered in our October content marketing campaign. I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you're using this sticker, what is your offer, which will transfer from the pages over here. Once again, this is why it's fantastic that you have it flippy like that. Uh, what is your topic? Transfer over. Keystone content, transfer over, and then you break down keystone content into blog posts, videos, emails, and then you're brainstorming for your social media ideas. Here, these are what I consider like more general things. So I will make a big general list to kind of go through. Um, for example, we will do a stickers to create. Let me make that blue color here. And this is where I'll just brainstorm sticker ideas. Obviously you should be different, but if you have topics, specific things toward your goal, that's basically, okay. So then I would just go through my planner from last quarter, any stickers that I didn't get around to creating, I could create them. As I am, you know, going through, if I come up with brainstorming ideas, I would just stick them right in here so I know what to create for as I'm going through and I'll go, oh, what am I creating this week? And then check them off as I create them. Um, over here, I'm going to do social media content ideas. And that way, if there's ever a day where I'm like, oh, I don't know what to post on Facebook or on Insta or whatever, I have my content ideas. Um, this is also a good one where like if you're doing uh, Chelsea's monthly um, CBD challenge, you could divide this into three and then just list out all the challenges for the month in order and then check them off as you do them. So that would be one thing to do with that page. And then for my final page here, I am actually going to do uh, my content brainstorming. And then how I do content brainstorming is I start off with the topic that I'm going to do. And I'm going to divide this in half. And that's about halfway there.
I'm going to divide this in half. Eh, a little more, a little less than half. I'm going to put my two main focuses for my content, um, which is Passion Planner. So I still do content and stickers for Flash Passion Planner. And Amplify Planner. And I have a lot of content for Passion Planner, which is why I'm making the Amplify Planner section larger. And then I can go from here and brainstorm out all the ideas I have for topics for content. And then each month, I can take one of these ideas, make it my topic, check it off. Or if I have, I'll brainstorm out like this. So I'll have a, like a major topic here that would go here. And then I could just brainstorm out all the little topics. And then those could go into my blog post videos and my emails. And then with my monthlies, in addition to this, I will do an overdue tasks list. I'll show you how I set that up. I do it as a running task list. just because I like to be fancy. And then... So then this is my overdue task list for the month. Um, Anything that I didn't get completed in September, I will list out here. And then each date, I will go through. If I completed it, I will color in the square completely. If I started it but didn't complete it, I'll do half colored in. Um, if I didn't do it at all, I'll just put a dot there. If I've started it but haven't completed it and then don't do it for a few days, we'll do a line until I start working on it again. And then as time goes on, you'll see where I completed things and where I need to progress. And I will show you an example of what that looks like when it's done. And when it's the month's over, it'll look something like this. Or like this. So that's how I'd set up the running task list. And then I leave the black there. So that's how I would set up the running task list. And then I'm just going to leave the rest of the pages between October and November blank so I can th put in notes um, if I'm taking any classes or if I notice anything um, I can memory keep using this so if there's anything important that happens I can put it in here and then when October's done I'll go into November and set it up the exact same way with my content campaign and my overdue task list same thing for December and then my very last page here, I will probably set up a page for future tasks. And that will be anything that doesn't go on in October, November, December get done. We'll migrate to the next quarter's planner. And that, my dears, is how I'm setting up my Amplify planner for quarter four. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the content you saw today, please make sure to subscribe to get notifications of new content. Also, please like, leave a comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. We have new content every Wednesday, so make sure to stay tuned, and I will see you next week. Enjoy the next video.